Hello everyone. Welcome to EC Learning YouTube channel. I am Rajesh Shambhi. Today I am going to introduce you to CBSC Class 10 Geography Chapter 1 Part 2. The name of the chapter is Resources and Development. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and share it. Now we can move on to the Resources and Development chapter. That's the uh, second part of the chapter of Geography CBSC Class 10. The first important question that we can expect from this chapter as far as board exams are concerned is what are the important utilizations of land. The first one is the forest. The second one the land which are not available for cultivation. They include the barren and the wasteland the land put to non-agricultural uses that is buildings, roads, factories, etc. The third one is the other uncultivated land, excluding fallow lands. The, by the split up of this heading are permanent pastures and grazing land, land under miscellaneous tree crop groves that includes the net zone area, then the cultivable wasteland, the fourth Fourth point is the fallow lands and the fifth one net zone area. In the slide, you can compare the land use category variations from 1960-61 to 2002-2003. It's self-explanatory, so I am moving on to the next next portion of this chapter. What are the important ways of land degradation? The 95% of our basic needs for food, shelter and clothing are obtained from land. Human activities have not only brought about degradation of land but have also aggravated the pace of natural forces to cause the damage to the land. At present in India, there are about 130 million hectares of degraded land. It amounts to about 28% of the landed area excluding forest. My mining sites are abandoned after excavation work is completed, leaving deep scars and traces of overburdening. The mineral processing like grinding of lime stone for cement industry and calcite and soapstone for ceramic industry generate huge quantity of dust in the atmosphere. The other question of this part are what are the main measures? that we can adopt to solve the problem of land degradation. They are the first one afforestation, afforestation and proper management of grazing. The second one planting of shelter bells of plants, control on overgrazing of the cattle, stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes etc. put some check on the land degradation process. Proper management of baselands, control of mining process Proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluents and waste after treatment can reduce land and water degradation in industrial and suburban areas. Now we can study about the important classifications of soil. It's a, an elaborate portion of this chapter and we can study it in detail and it's very important from CBSC exam point of view. The soil is the most important renewable natural resources that we can find in this world. It is the medium of plant growth and it supports different types of living organisms on the earth. It takes millions of years to form soil up to a few centimeter in depth. Relief, parent rock or bedrock, climate, vegetation and other forms of life and time are important factors in the formation of soil. Various Forces of nature such as the change in the temperature, actions of running water, wind and glaciers, activities of decomposers etc. contribute to the formation of soil. On the basis of the factors responsible for soil formation, color, thickness, texture, age, chemical and physical properties, the soils of India can be classified into the following types. The India has varied relief features, landforms, climatic realms and vegetation types. They have 
contributed in the development of various types of soils. What is meant by alluvial soil? It is the first classification of the uh, soil that we can find in India. Alluvial soil is the most widely spread and important soil in our country. In fact, the whole northern plains are made up of this type of soil. They have been deposited by three important Himalayan river systems, the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. They extend in Rajasthan, Gujarat, deltas of Mahanadi, Godhaveri, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. According to the age, alluvial soils can be classified as the old alluvial soil, which is otherwise known as Bangar, and the new alluvial soil known as Kadar. Alluvial soils as a whole are generally very fertile. Mostly, these soils contain adequate proportion of potash, phosphoric acid and lime, which are ideal for the growth of sugarcane, paddy, wheat and other cereal and pulses, pulse crops. Due to its high fertility, regions of alluvial soils are intensively cultivated and densely populated. Then the other type of soil is the black soil. As the name indicates, their, their color is black and they are also known as rugger soils. The climatic condition along with the parent rock material are the important factors for the formation of black soil. They cover the plateaus of Maharashtra, Saurashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Krishna and Godavari valleys. What is meant by direct and yellow soils? This is the third classification of the soil that we can find in our country. Red soil develops a crystalline in igneous rock in areas of low rainfall in the eastern and southern parts of the Deccan Plateau. Yellow and red soils are also found in parts of Orissa, Chhattisgarh, Ganga Plain, etc. These soils develop a reddish color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rocks. It looks yellow when it occurs in a dehydrated form. The fourth classification is the laterite soil. It is the name laterite is derived from the Latin word latha, which means brick. The laterite soil develops in areas with high temperature and heavy rainfall. This is the result of intense leaching due to heavy rain. Laterite soils are suitable for cultivation with adequate doses of manures and fertilizers. These soils are mainly found in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and the hilly areas of Orissa and Assam. Red laterite soils in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Kerala are more suitable for crops like cashew nut. Arid soils. What is meant by arid soils can be expected for the board exams. They range from red to brown in color. They are generally sandy in texture and saline in nature. In some areas, the salt content is so high and the common salt is obtained by evaporating the water. The lower horizons of the soil are occupied by kangar because of the increasing calcium content downwards. The kangar layer formations in the bottom horizons restrict the infiltration of water. Now we can study about the forest soils. What do you mean by forest soils and where are they located is an important question. Forest soils are found in the hilly and mountainous areas where sufficient rain forests are available. They are loamy and silty in valley slides and coarse grained in the upper slopes. In the snow covered areas of Himalayas, these soils experience denudation and are ascetic with low humus content. The soils found in the lower parts of the valley, particularly on the river terraces and alluvial fans are fertile. Now, the other important question is, what do you mean by soil erosion and how does it happen? The denudation of the soil cover and subsequent washing down is subscribed as, described as soil erosion. The process of soil formation and erosion go on simultaneously and generally there is a ba balance between the two. Sometimes the balance is disturbed due to human activities like Deforestation, overgrazing, construction, mining, etc. What is meant by gullies? The running water cuts through the clay soils 
and makes deep channels which is known as gullies. Then we can study about sheet erosion. What is meant by sheet erosion? If the topmost soil is washed away, that situation is known as sheet erosion. Soil erosion is caused by the defective methods of farming, farming, plowing in a wrong way also, that is, in the wrong method of up and down the slopes forms channels for the quick flow of water leading to soil erosion. What is meant by condor plowing? Plowing along the condor lines can decelerate the flow of water down the slopes. This is known as condor plowing. Terrace cultivation restricts erosion. Western and center of Himalayas have well developed terrace farming. This method is known as strip cropping. The shelter belts have contributed significantly to the stabilization of sand dunes and in stabilizing the desert. Thus we have come to the end of this chapter. Thank you all for watching my video. Please subscribe and share it.